Duffley was born in May of 2001. He's actually the son of my youngest brother and his girlfriend. And when I received the phone call from my brother, I found out that he was born at only 26 weeks, one pound, 12 ounces. So he was very premature and he was in critical condition. And there were several nights that we were told that Christopher wouldn't make it for the night. And at that point, I prayed for Christopher. And I just asked God to be with my brother and to do what his will would be. And for a long time, I had no contact with my brother. Really didn't know what happened to Christopher. And all of a sudden, my heart was moved. Where was my nephew? What happened to him? And on my first phone call to social services, the gentleman knew about Christopher, and he indeed was in foster care. He was totally blind. He had been born with cocaine in his system, and he had a host of other medical issues. My first response to that, or my first feeling to that, was fear. I prayed very intently, and I really, I begged the Lord, could you just show me, show me what you would want? And he did, he answered in my heart. He told me, do not be afraid, that I will take care of everything. And so I met with social services, we started the paperwork, and we received custody of Christopher on our 14th wedding anniversary. That day, I believe God gave me a prophecy for Christopher. The day will come, and come repeatedly during your life, that you will be so overwhelmed with God's graciousness that tears will stream down your face. Whoever shall receive one such little child in my name receives me. That confirmation was really important to my heart that I really felt as a family. We made the right decision and we had discerned what God wanted. Since that time, we've had challenges and we've had joys. And one of the greatest joys was to hear Christopher make noise, sing, and keep beat. He really didn't talk till about first grade. So when he sang, it was really neat. And it wasn't shortly around that time that we found out that Christopher had perfect pitch. And he started to do remarkable things. And what a joy and what a prophecy that God gave us that these tears would come and they come out of great joy. And when Christopher sings, open the eyes of my heart, he teaches us to not see everything with our eyes, but to see things like God sees things through our heart. Although the circumstances were difficult, very difficult, our lives are messy, our families are broken, but yet through that and through our suffering, God makes beautiful things.
there you have a good picture of what our family has undertaken. Uh, I try cry every time because it's so beautiful. Um, you know, and it all starts with something very simple that you've all experienced. And that's baptism. And I am so grateful that we have that sacrament. Because that sacrament, we become the light in the darkness. When we think of baptism, we think of water. Right? We think of the candle that the godparents hold. And we think of the oil. Because as you saw in the picture, Father Mark smeared the oil all over Christopher. And that's the first thing we did with Christopher when he came home to us, was baptize him. Well, why was that? Well, because... That is a treasure in our faith and in our lives that brings that light into the world. There's a special other thing that happens when you're baptized, and the priest or the deacon, what they do is they touch the mouth and they touch the ears, and they, they say a word, a word called epitha, and it means to be open. So the mouth can be open to hear the word of God. I'm sorry, the, yeah. the ears to hear the word of God and the mouth to speak the word of God. And that is what has happened to all of you. And all you have to do is kind of activate that. And I, uh, my husband and I both were brought up Catholic and we had parents who were faithful. And parents, thank you today for being your kids. And, and, um, going through your, sometimes, you know, going and doing, coming to class and stuff is really boring. So that's why we felt, when we asked you to come, we want to share our story, because your life is nothing. It, it's not boring. It's very exciting. We just have to change our attitude, and we have to realize what we have, the treasure of our faith, and how God can touch our lives. In the dignity of a person, we have, we believe that every person is, Christ, is precious, that people are more important than things, and that the measure of every institution is whether it threatens or enhances the life and dignity of the human person. We can debate and talk about our society, but these are really words to think about. But one thing that our Catholic faith tells us, it tells us that life is precious. To be called life. And today, that's almost a dangerous thing. But to live it out and to see what God can do with a situation that was rather troubling. Uh, and I mentioned my life is messy. Yeah, my brother did drugs. My brother abandoned his son. And then God called on us not to be heroes, but to answer the call, to be a light. And, and it's kind of that simple. But with that light, sometimes, comes other things. Because it certainly was not easy to bring a child home who was completely blind. But he, uh, he was 15 uh, months old when he came home to us, and he couldn't sit up. <laughs> Let me do some verification for you. I, 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 um, I did this. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs>
Well, how would you feel about having another sibling who was blind? And what did they say? What do you think they said? <laughs> I can't remember. Well, you can't. Mom's not going to tell the story. <laughs> Every what you say. Oh, we want a new plaything. We want a new plaything. So, um, let's see where I am now. So now, uh, this was 12 years old now. We had to attend Parkside Middle School, which I'm actually was 13. But we started off at Northwest Elementary, so we've been in public school the entire time. And we were in first grade. This is hard to in the national anthem. And the national anthem is actually a very hard song to sing. And so this is for even more time to sing. It's very hard. Sang it at Memorial Day. I know at school you guys might have Memorial Day events in school. And uh, so Christopher first sang uh, the, the national anthem then. And then there was a story done in the Union Leader. And oh, Chris, uh, Grace, you can put this, the picture up over back. Um, and then there was a sister performed, Open the Eyes of My Heart. And how he came to, to sing that song, my husband's going to tell you about that a little more. But when we decided to raise a Catholic family, we decided to have things in our home that would nurture our faith. So one was Christian music. And so one of the songs that Christopher really liked from um, uh, the Kids' Praise and Worship CD we had was open the eyes of my heart. And that's actually on both my CD and my EP. <laughs> Which is going to exist, but we'll now... Do we'll do a commercial at the end. <laughs> and, and, so excited. I mean, and, so contagious, isn't it? <laughs> and that's also what I'm going to be seeing tonight, so... Right, you are. You're going to do that. So, but, but what has happened is that uh, Christopher's talk, the, uh, the story that we share, and what God has done with his life, because if you were to sit around and I'd give you a scenario and say, well, they're doing drugs, they're not married, they're this, they're that, what might you have thought? What would the average person on the street would say? Well, they would probably say, abort the baby. So we are just very happy to share our story with you and to show you what God can do when we say yes and we make some hard decisions. That's not what we would say for aborting. No, we don't. Yeah, that's right. And we believe that every life is precious. And they say from the womb to the tomb. So we, again, we're uh, very glad to be here. So what Christopher's going to do is he is, uh, I'm going to have Anne-Marie come up. And, and since I have kids, um, it's good to hear from peers. So I'm going to have Anne come up and just share uh, a few thoughts about what it's been like to be with Christopher and her family. <coughs> You know that new girl in the class? She has really weird eyes that kind of pop out, or their teeth overlap in the front, or she's always, always the last one to answer the question. She must be retarded. Well, what you might not know about them is that they have special gifts. So I might be walking with Christopher in the mall, he may be having a temper tantrum, and he may be crying and screaming, and I get these nasty looks from parents just be like, what is this kid? He is 12, and why is he stopping and screaming? People don't see gifts. You cannot make a judgment just look by looking at somebody and saying, well, I think they look weird, so they must be weird. Because that's something I've learned with Christopher, that <laughs> through all the weird moments, through everything, there's a treasure in somebody. And that's, that's something that you don't learn, especially growing up and going to school with a bunch of people who pass judgments really easily. Because you don't know what's inside everybody. You don't look at me and you don't say, oh, she makes jewelry. She, she must, oh, she has her own business. No, you, you think, she has a blind brother. That's kind of cool. You don't know what it's like growing up with a blind sibling. You don't know all the stresses that it's had upon our family until it really hits you that you cannot have glass silverware. You cannot, I'm not glass silverware, glass Tupperware without him shattering it. And it's, it's been a challenge, but it's been worth it because you don't know what God has in store for you when you go through all the rough stuff until he brings all the treasures that follow. So that's what I've learned. 
having my support.